what's being used. So if you look at this as an engine, you say the supply is basically your existing facilities. What do you currently own? The demand is new requirements coming in that change the demand for facilities and buildings. And then in the middle, you want to run scenarios of what if. And this is a moving target. As the years go by, as the days go by, the budgets change, the demand changes, uh, the uh, administration changes from Bush to Obama, the, the budgets and the way money is spent on buildings changes. So be able to, to run different scenarios very rapidly. And then when the time is right to say, OK, this is the one that we're running with. Let's design that building. The Coast Guard had to design 35 command centers around the US. It used to take them 10 months to get consensus on one of them. And with their architects and engineers, we worked with them collaboratively and helped them understand how to use these tools. We were able to complete 35 of them in a little bit le less than nine months. So it's dramatically different time. And it's not really all about speed. It's also about accuracy and being able to be decisive and, and, and move forward really quickly with your decisions. And that's what the US Coast Guard was uh, very advanced in their adoption of BIM. And we still are working with them on a series of projects. And it connects beyond just the design and construction of buildings. It's actually looking at their business processes and their other types of data that they have. So as an architect, it's been very exciting to work with clients like this that actually expand the type of things you can do for a client. It's not design and construction is great, but that's not the end of it all. There's a lot of other things touching that. And that's really the opportunity that I see out there that we need to uh, grasp. So here's another um, series of presentations. This is all sample data. This is not their actual data for the Coast Guard. But we started running scenarios of how do you plan if uh, an, an aircraft, an, uh, an helicopter can't fly that day because something's happening in the building that can't support that helicopter. And if you have the whole West Coast to manage, where are the buildings that are not allowing that helicopter to take off? And it seems very simple, but this is kind of an everyday occurrence of we need facilities that support these um, helicopters and, and ships to, to operate and to support the Coast Guard's mission. So being able to balance between that of how do we make decisions rapidly. And in the middle, it's all BIM. It's basically about buildings, whether they're existing buildings or new buildings. How do they support that mission? So integrated decision making. This is another part of the Coast Guard work. It's kind of related to integrated project delivery that the AIA has been, and I was involved with that committee in the AIA, but being able to have teams work collaboratively that typically would not work collaboratively. You kind of do your work and you pass it off to the next team and then they would react to it and pass it back and you have to make changes. By having an integrated decision making process where it's non-linear, things start tying together and looping back around, it dramatically changes how decisions are made uh, in the design and construction of buildings and, and management of facilities. So um, I'll be showing a little bit more of this later, too. But we've actually used this diagram to kind of explain some of the tools that are being used. Again, it's not about the tools, the technology. It's really about connecting people and decisions. And tools are just like paper and pencil. So think of BIM as not, it's not a software. I think all of you know about that. It's software is part of it, but the process, and the connections that happen between different tools. So in the middle of where it says Fusion Onuma tools, uh, it's basically cloud computing based tools that we use. So the Onuma system is one of them. We connect to Fusion, which is the California Community College Foundation system for managing facilities. Also Esri ArcGIS server serving GIS data connected to all this. So you're able to kind of mash up GIS data, geographic data, with facility data, with ge geometries of buildings, and be able to run what if scenarios with that. And on the input side, um, there's a lot of different tools, um, some of them just on the desktop. Uh, so we're in the cloud on the internet, which means we can connect to other things on the internet. But there are a lot of other great tools that are more desktop bound, the really powerful BIM applications like Revit, very important part of this process, but not great for real time interaction. So each tool has its strength. We take the Revit data, we pull it into the model server, then we can give access to non Revit users, for example, to make decisions, then push it back to Revit to continue with the design work. So again, nonlinear process, connecting a lot of tools together, open standards driving those connections. So BIM can be simple. Uh, we've actually, this is about a 450 person audience where we actually had them interact through iPhones even. This was actually even several years ago, inputting data and generating the requirements for a building. And then you, you'll see the results in a little bit here. So the simplicity is key to all of this. 
It's a very important slide here. This is by Ecotech, um, uh, an Autodesk product now, but uh, uh, the, the concept is very similar to what we do, but they're looking at it from an energy point of view. We're looking at it from a programming point of view. So in our world, an Excel file from a client saying, here's a square footage of a building and we need a cathedral is a BIM. As long as it's structured correctly, we can import it into a tool like the Onuma system and create an automatic bl blocking and stacking model at that second level of detail. You don't necessarily have to go to the highly detailed model, start having very important discussions at that point. Do we have all the programming requirements that the client wants? Is this a warehouse or a cathedral? What kind of syst mechanical systems do we need? What type of windows do we need? And then once those decisions, and you do a lot of what-if scenarios, it's just like sketch, sketching on paper, basically. You do a lot of different what-if scenarios in a charrette type environment, for example, before you move on to the detailed design. Another surprising thing about this diagram here is there's a lot of really great BIM applications right now that are going into design and construction. Highly detailed 3D model, clash detection, all the stuff that you guys have seen. But that highly detailed model is then delivered back to the owner on a CD. Owner doesn't know how to use BIM, but they want to get to the data in that model. The data in that model, therefore, is trapped in a format that's very difficult to get to. So there are many solutions out there that are looking at how do we get data back out, and ours is one of them. Basically, you can bring it back to a format that can then be delivered to the owner to, for real-time interaction to do queries like how many square feet of conference room do we have in this building or what's the condition of a particular room. So level of detail is absolutely critical t to understand where you are in the process. And This is not only about the technology. This is nothing new, actually. Frank Gehry has been doing it. Architects have been doing it for years. When we do our blocking and stacking, we want a museum. Frank Gehry is designing a museum or a concert hall. It starts with program requirements. So either you're designing from the inside out or the outside in, but it all has to, all has to come together. You can't design a, a masterpiece and not have the right size auditorium, for example, that the client needs for the number of people in the, in the building. So the, the, the being able to rapidly visualize that is what we do as architects naturally. So we need to think of that, think of the technology in those terms. BIMStorm, if you go to BIMStorm.com, I invite anybody to actually join us on the next BIMStorms. We have them throughout the year. They're open to anybody to participate. This is actually from almost three years ago now um, with uh, BIMStorm Los Angeles, where we had 130 teams from around the world designing 420 buildings in 24 hours. This is Penn State involved with us. The Penn State team's task was to look at cost estimating and constructability. So each member, each student here, you'll see a different thing on their screen. They're basically pulling data in real time as other teams from around the world were designing these different buildings at different levels of detail. So BIMStorm. Um, and we actually have been running BIMStorms publicly and also privately with, with the companies like Leo Daily, actually helping them on their projects you know, implement the BIMStorm process in uh, their, their workflow. And it, it goes all the way from doing things on paper and pencil and having CAD and 3D and BIM and GIS data all coming together and letting people collaborate and make decisions uh, in the process. Simplicity, we also have an iPad and an Android interface uh, where teams are using this right now to go out and document and, and confirm uh, the as-built condition of buildings or document existing buildings. So simple interface to BIM. Anything you enter here ends up in the BIM in a format that can be moved off to other applications. So here's what an Excel file looks like. Uh, nobody's touched the design yet other than formatting it in Excel, importing it into the NUMA system, and then exporting it to Google Earth. Um, the discussion at this point would be, can we put a building of this type on this site? Can we go that high? Does it make sense to have a building of this size, of this type of use, in this part of Boston? And the answer is no, actually. It's hitting the flight path from uh, the airport. Uh, but this, you see this building is kind of top heavy, and the reason it's top heavy is the square footage on the top is a 140 hotel rooms. You see the elevator core and the mechanical core through the middle. We haven't imported the tenant space on the lower floor yet, but by automatic, it's an automatically generated design. Nobody's touched a design yet. It, you can start rapidly generating what if blocking and stacking models and then react to them. And the way that we work that is we actually in the BIMStorm Boston with the audience, 90 minutes, we had the audience actually submitting through iPhones and PCs connected to the internet requests for buildings. I'm an owner. I want a 200,000 square foot office building that's 30 stories high on this site in Boston. It creates a very simplified 
block building, but it's a BIM. It has all the floors, it has a floor to floor height, it has a use in it. And you can start seeing that obviously a lot of this doesn't make sense. If it's 90 minutes, you're not going to resolve the design, and there's some buildings that don't fit on that type of site, and the height's too high. But you start running through what if scenarios very quickly, and then you can have others react to this. Having it on the web, then you can collaborate with others in the room or across the world and say, what do you think of this from a structural point of view, and react to that. So one